Hi there, everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking more about decimal addition and subtraction, specifically with base 10 blocks. Okay, so you've done some work with addition and subtraction of decimals. You've done some work with base 10 blocks. Today, we're going to combine them. Okay, so this goes along with week six, days one through three of your e-learning packet. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up some example problems so we can get started. Okay, so the first problem that I want to look at is problem number one on day one. Okay, so you can see here they're asking us to add two and sixteen hundredths plus three and forty-five hundredths. So when you draw out decimals using base ten blocks, um, or when you model it using base ten blocks, if you happen to have some at home, um, the ones are represented by these flats. These are the ones that are made up of one hundred little cubes. The tenths are made up of the longs or these rods that are made up of 10 cubes. And then the hundredths are the little individual cubes because it takes 100 of these to equal one whole. Okay, So you can see here they already modeled 2 and 16 hundredths for us. Um, the 2 is seen with these two flats, the, the 1 tenth that's right here, and the six hundredths is right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and my first step is going to be to draw out three and 45 hundredths for us. Okay, so I'm gonna stick with the same colors just to make it a little bit easier to follow. Okay, so I have three and 45 hundredths. This three tells me I need three of the flats. Okay, cause this represents three holes. Now, I'm not going to take the time to go through and divide it into 100 little squares, and you don't have to either, as long as you have your drawing that shows me what you're getting at. That shows me that you understand that these represent the flats or the holes. Okay, now I'm going to do four tenths. So this tells me that I need to draw four of these rods or these longs. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, and if yours aren't exactly perfect, that's okay. I totally get it. Um, mine aren't quite perfect. It's just, I want it to be the kind of the general shape, okay? So if you're drawing a rod, it needs to look thinner and kind of like a rod, right? Um, and so then lastly here, I'm gonna draw it in yellow. We have our five hundredths. So I'm gonna draw five little squares which of course in real life would be five little cubes. Okay. So now that we have our models, you might be asking, how do we actually get the answer? Well, we add them together, okay? So I showed you in another video how to add decimals straight down using kind of the standard form. Um, today we're gonna talk about how to do it using these pictures. So when I look at the ones, or the hundredths, sorry. I'm gonna start with the hundredths when I add together because we're starting all the way to the right with the smallest ones. I see that I have six hundredths here and five hundredths here. So if I take six plus five, that gives me 11, right? That gives me one whole. So what I have to do is I have to turn 10 of these into one rod here because if I were to put them all together um, and group them all together into one long row, it would leave me with one rod and then one little cube here because this right here, that would make up 10 places. Um, and so when I combine them all together, it's kind of like carrying in when we do kind of standard addition. So seven, eight, nine, ten, and that's not perfect, but you get the idea. Um, so I'm going to cross out then. I'm going to cross out 10 of these. So I can cross out all of these and four of these. And then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna turn them into one rod. 
Okay, so now I only have one hundredth left. Okay, so I have one hundredth. And I need to figure out how many tenths I have. So if I add all my rods together, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six tenths. And then how many ones do I have? Well, I have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so to write that as a decimal number, it would be 5.61. Okay, and you could check that by doing kind of our standard decimal addition where you line them all up and you just add them together like you would any other number. Uh, but that's how you do that when you have more than 10 hundredths. You need to take out 10 of them and turn them into a rod. We're kind of carrying them over. We're grouping them into the next biggest decimal place. If you had 10 tenths, then you would combine all those together because that would equal a whole. That would equal one. Um, so it's the same concept as carrying, except we're just modeling out with pictures. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this page, and we're going to look at an example problem from day two. We're going to get into some subtraction here. Okay, so the problem that we're going to look at on this page is two and sixteen hundredths minus one and five hundredths. Okay, so 2.16 minus 1.05. They've already modeled two and sixteen hundredths for us. Okay, they showed us that we have two holes one tenth here in the blue and six hundredths here in the yellow. Okay, so I'm going to use the same colors to model out one and five hundredths. It says I have one hole because there's, oh, so sorry, because there is a one in the ones place. So I draw on my one there. Okay, now I'm going to look at my tenths place. Well, there's a zero there, so I don't have any tenths. Okay, so I'm going to move on to my hundredths. There's a five in the hundredths place, so I need five of those little individual cubes to represent five hundredths. Okay, so I'm going to draw five tiny squares, and then we're going to start the subtraction. Okay, so what you do when you have a model like this is we've represented our larger number up top here and our smaller number down here. Um, to show subtraction in the model, I'm actually going to do some crossing out just to kind of show that we're getting rid of it. So what I mean is to start with our hundredths place, we're doing six minus five, right? Because we have a six here and we have a five here. So this is the same as six minus five. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross out these five from my whole set of six here. And that leaves me with one left. Okay, so that shows me through model that six minus five is one. Okay, now there's nothing to take away from our tenths place here. So this place just stays one. Over here though, we have two holes minus one hole. So we got to cross out one of these holes and it leaves us with one. So our answer then is 1.11 or one in 11 hundredths. Okay, because we have one in the ones place, we have one, one left over when we subtract. We have one tenth and we have one hundredth. So that's how you're going to do some of the straightforward subtraction problems there. And I want to take a quick look at another one uh, that has some regrouping in it. Okay, so it doesn't trip you up. So this is number three on day two, where you take four and twenty-three hundredths minus two and sixty-six hundredths. Okay, so 
for this one, they don't model any of the numbers for us, so we have to do it ourselves, and that's okay, because we've practiced, so we know how. Okay, so I'm gonna start by showing my four tenths here. And I did make them a little bit smaller than I might have in another problem, just because I have to fit four of them here. Uh, but we know what we're talking about, don't. You've practiced, so you know what this means. Um, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and model my two ones down here while we're at it. Okay, now we're gonna go to our tenths place. I have a two in my tenths place. So I need two of these, these rods or these longs. Okay, and down here I have a six in my tenths place, so I'm gonna draw six of them. Okay, it's just important to pay attention to the number that is there. Okay, so three, four, five, and six, right? Um, and then lastly, we're gonna look at our hundredths place. Okay, so in the hundredths place, I have a three. So I draw three teeny tiny little cubes to represent my hundredths. Down here, there's a six, so I gotta draw six teeny tiny little cubes. Okay, because like I said earlier, 100 of these make up one year holes, that's why they're called hundredths. That's why we use the little cubes. So that is how we go about modeling them. Now we're going to subtract. Okay, so we're subtracting from this group up here because these are, this is our larger number, right? Um, as you can see in our problem, we always start subtraction problems with the larger number, the greater number. Four and 23 hundredths is it. So we're gonna start with our hundredths place. We start all the way to the right always when we subtract. But you might notice I can't take three minus six. There's not enough there. So what I have to do is I have to come over here and I have to turn this long or this rod into hundredths, okay? So since 10 of these little cubes, 10 of these hundredths make up one tenth, I'm going to get rid of, oh, sorry, I'm going to get rid of this long here and turn it into 10 pieces or 10 hundredths. Okay, so you would draw out five more little cubes here, or 10 more, sorry. Okay, and then we would get rid of that long. So now we can do our subtraction in the hundredths place. Okay, so now I have 13 hundredths minus six hundredths. Okay, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to cross out six of these hundredths. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And that leaves me with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so in the hundredths place, we will have a seven. Now I go over here to the tenths place. Once again, I don't have enough tenths to subtract from, okay? Because one is smaller than six. So I gotta do the same process. I have to go over here to my ones place and I have to borrow. I have to turn one of these holes into 10 longs or 10 rods, right? So I'm gonna get rid of this one and I'm gonna turn it into 10 of these so that we can subtract. And the reason that I'm turning it into 10 is because 10 of these rods or these longs make up one hole, one flat. Nine and 10. Okay, so then I erase that one because I just changed it into 10 of these. So it can't stay over here. And then I have to go through and subtract these six tenths from down here. So that's minus one, two, three, four, five, 
six. Okay, and then I'm left with one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm left with five tenths. And if you'll notice for subtraction, I'm always doing my drawings and my works on these models up here. That's because, like I said, we're subtracting from the larger number. Okay, so we're taking the number of blocks that are down here out of the number that's up here. Okay. So then lastly, we have three, because that's how many we have left over since we borrowed, minus two. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna cross out two of these and that leaves me with one. So my final answer then is one and 57 hundredths or 1.57. So that's how you're gonna go about doing the problems for this week. Um, if you look at day number three, you will see that you have some story problems over it. It is the same process or for those ones, I would be okay if you just did kind of the standard uh, addition and subtraction for fractions. So what I mean, is for this one, it says Tina hiked 2.45 miles in the morning. She hiked an additional 3.16 miles in the afternoon. How many total miles did she hike? As long as you're showing your work for this, I am okay if you do it with the standard form, which would be doing it like this. Okay, and then just adding like you normally would. Okay. So if you need more help on the way to do that, I do have another video that I did earlier in the e-learning process that I will tag here in this video. Um, but otherwise, I hope that this helps. I hope that this makes a little bit more sense. If you have any questions, please reach out. Otherwise, stay safe and have a great day.